Over the last 10 years, we have changed the face of MS. We have changed our very understanding of the pathogenesis of the disease with a better, clearer picture of how both B and T cells affect the condition. We have updated the very models that we use to study multiple sclerosis, from stick figures to the leaky pool. We have changed and updated the phenotypes, the definitions we use to describe patients, to include modifiers such as with or without activity, with or without worsening, with or without progression, which gives us a more accurate picture of that individual's experience. We have updated our diagnostic criteria to incorporate modern neuroimaging and allow a faster diagnosis, which translates into faster onset of disease-modifying therapy and better outcomes. Our neurodiagnostic tools used to diagnose and to monitor MS have evolved. We now are on the cusp of incorporating technologies such as OCT and brain atrophy measures into the clinic. The very outcome measures used in MS have changed. We no longer are satisfied with decreasing the frequency of attacks and slowing progression of disease. We now look at outcomes such as no evidence of disease activity and confirm disability improvements, not to mention normalizing rates of brain atrophy. We have updated the therapeutics in the MS armamentarium to include several highly effective therapies. So effective, in fact, that they have changed our expectations of disease modification in the field. And yet, despite all of these updates, all of these changes, all of this evolution, many of us find that we are still delivering care in the same way we did 20, 30 years ago. With these tools at hand, it is now time for us to update the way in which we deliver MS care to the patient in the clinic and beyond.